Hey kiddos, hopefully a short one today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about how to take um, a three-dimensional structure and be able to represent that in some meaningful way within a really simplistic two-dimensional line structure. So we're gonna start with a really simple molecule, one that you've probably drawn a ton of times. This is CH4 uh, methane. Of course, that's like our simplest hydrocarbon, our simplest alkane. Um, and if you remember correctly that, that even though when we draw this, it looks like the bonds are all at a 90 degree angle, but of course we know they're not. When we learned about Vesper theory in Chem 1 or AP Chem or whatever, um, you know that, that actually this is a three dimensional molecule that these bond angles between each other are actually all like 109.5, that this arranges itself into a nice little tetrahedral molecule. So we've got one going up and one going over. And then what we really have, if we were doing it three-dimensionally, is that we've got one sort of going down here, right? And then one coming out of the board at you, and then one maybe sort of straight back, like directly behind the carbon, sort of depending on how you oriented it. But essentially what it means is they're not all in the same plane. And so how do we represent that? Well, sometimes, I'll be honest with you, sometimes we don't. Um, sometimes we just draw it out and let it be and work from there. Um, but many times that three, dimension, three dimensionality really, really matters, okay? It matters. I mean, if you think about biochemical activity and enzymatic activity and the whole lock and key mechanism that you talk about in biology, 3D structures matter and they matter a lot. Um, and so sometimes we need to take even a relatively simple molecule and be able to represent it into a three dimensional structure. So here's how we do that. So to be able to three-dimensionally represent these things, or at least to give some indication of what the three-dimensional structure will be, we're gonna use two things. We're gonna use a wedge, and we're gonna use dashes. And really, to be perfectly precise, we're gonna use a dashed wedge and a solid wedge um, to show us what's going on. So if we're drawing, redrawing our methane here then, so we've got carbon, we can draw two of the hydrogens in the same plane. Now, really, I shouldn't draw them like that at 90 degrees. If I were going to be doing a really good job of this, we should draw it so that it was at about 109.5 degrees, right? But they're in the same plane. They're lying flat on the board, okay? And then to represent the others, one of them is going to be coming out of the board and one of them is going to be going back this way um, towards me into the board, okay? And so I've represented those up here. When you see a wedge, a solid wedge, that means that it's something that's going out of the board towards you. And so we're gonna draw that wedge. Okay? And then for the things that are going back in, the ones that are coming back towards me, then we're gonna draw a dashed wedge or occasionally, occasionally you will see that drawn just as dashed lines, like just a series of dashed lines. That does happen sometimes. I know my stencil set has it that way, um, and that I've drawn them that way in the past. If you really want to be a little bit more precise though, you're gonna draw them as dashed wedges. That's actually difficult. My recommendation to you is start with the big line and work backwards, because if you start with the small one, I don't know, it always just ends up looking weird to me. It doesn't look very wedged, okay? So out of the board towards you, okay? back into the board towards me in the plane of the board or in the plane of the page. Um, we're not gonna go too deep into this because I think the best way to do this is to practice it. I'm gonna draw a couple of examples up here so you can see them in slightly more complicated molecules. Um, and then that's it. All right, so obviously we mentioned that practice is gonna be the most important, but I wanted you to see a couple of more examples of how the wedges and dashes look. Um, so we've got a, a normal chain molecule here. There's a wedge up here. You'll notice there's nothing at the end of that wedge. So if this is a hydrocarbon, there's nothing at the end of the wedge. What is it? It's a hydrogen, right? Okay, so that's the hydrogen. That means that that hydrogen is coming out of the page towards you, okay? Um, and then this chlorine, okay, is going back into the page away from you. So back out of the plane, up to out of the plane are what those are representing, okay? Um, we've got a cyclic molecule here, again, what this is showing is that one of the hydroxyl groups is going that way, the other one is going that way. Okay, so they're going opposite directions. And I know that since I'm recording this on the video and the, the direction might seem a little weird, remember the rule, solid wedge coming towards you, dashed wedge going away from you. 
Um, I just wanted you to see a compound like this because when we get to nomenclature and drawing structures and stuff, you'll, you're, you're going to see something like this and sort of freak out a little bit. What this is is what's called a bicyclic structure, meaning that there are actually two rings. So there's a ring here in the plane, okay, in the plane of the board. And then there's another ring that's going up. In this case, it's coming towards you, out of the board, towards you, because we've got a wedge here. You'll see it's actually a double wedge showing that this carbon up here is up out of the plane of these things. And then over here on the other side, then we've got the bromine also going in that same direction and then a hydrogen going back in the other direction. You're like, that's all well and good. Couldn't we just draw things flat? Well, I mean, like these things matter. The fact that this bromine is going up out in the same direction that this second ring is coming out of has some enormous implications for where things can attack and how reactions um, can happen. So that matters. The three dimensionality of these structures really matters. Now, are we always going to draw wedges and dashes? Here's the thing. If you want to be safe, yes, always draw them. Um, I'm not always going to require them. And indeed, a lot of your professors wouldn't always require them, but they are useful and they do show that three dimensionality. What is also a great way to show the three dimensionality is to put things into a program like ChemSketch or something that we're obviously going to use a lot of this year to really get a better grasp on the three dimensionality. Okay, so that's wedges and dashes and line structures. Thanks, kiddos.